All right, and welcome to part two of this SuperTog tutorial, where we are building some business cards. As you can see, we already have our document all set up, and if you are just coming into this, uh, please go back and watch part one of this video, otherwise none of this will make any sense. The first thing we're gonna start doing is gathering all of the resources that we're gonna need to build the document. And as you can see, I've got my, my folder here already set up and I've already dumped a few of the resources that I'm going to need in here but I do need to resize this graphic that I built uh, I'm just opening this up in Illustrator because that's where I built it in I need to edit my ruler inches okay uh, I'm just gonna Quick document setup, edit my artboards. I need them to be 3.5 by 2 inches. Grab this object transform scale. I want to scale the strokes and effects, and I think I'm going to want it to be about 20%. That's pretty close. Whoops. And from here on, I'll just kind of adjust it by eye. And I'm doing this just to keep my file sizes down so that I can do what I need to do. But as you can see, if I would have imported that just straight into there, I would actually have a little bit of white space. My, my image wouldn't have been quite the right aspect ratio. It would have been close, but not quite where I want it to be. So we'll just do that. Actually, for this piece, I am going to create a separate InDesign document for those letters because I think I'm going to overlay them over top of some other pieces of the design. So I'll just create another InDesign document, three and a half by two, paste, and we will just save that as OV text. And yada, 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 get rid of all that stuff. I think I'll leave my birds and my mountains alone for now, so we'll save that version as well. Close out of that. And now let's go back into our InDesign document. And what I'm gonna do is resize this window a little bit so that I can see my, my resources down there. And then what I'm gonna do is just drag that. Uh, this is the, definitely the easiest way to place graphics in InDesign, is to just drag and drop them. And I am actually gonna turn off, I have the, um, the smart guides on right now, which is great for if you're trying to get everything equally spaced and whatever, because it snaps to where it needs to be but when I already have all my guides set, I don't want the smart guides to override what I'm trying to do. So I'll turn that off. So I usually turn those off when, I'm, when I've already got all my guides and things set like that. Next step I got, and let's see, and next I'm going to scale this up a little bit. If you hold Shift and Apple, that scales everything up proportionally. And I wanna make sure that I, whoops, yeah, zoom in a little first. And if you see, you'll see how this looks really pixelated and not right at all. Don't worry about that. It's just uh, InDesign displays at a low, uh, low quality images just to save your memory. And so that's easiest. That's, that's why that's doing that. And as you can see, I actually got my aspect ratio a little bit off, but it's not enough that it's going to bother me. So what I'll do is fill the frame proportionally, and that way it uses up all the space I have available, and it keeps its proportions. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to bring in a thumbnail of one of my videos so I need to go where I have those saved because I'm gonna put my photo on these 
so that people will remember me when I hand them out. I'm actually making these as uh, things to give to people that I interact with on my upcoming road trip so that to just something to generate more subscribers, things like that. I don't want to pick too dorky of a thumbnail. Nope, that one's not going to work because it's not me. Yeah, I think I like that one. And so then I'll take that, drag and drop that into my InDesign document. And it's actually quite a bit bigger than I need it to be. So again, Shift and Apple scales down the image at the same time as your, uh, your image frame. And then what I'm going to do there is I'll just make this more of like a, a portrait orientation mugshot. I'll just put this right up here. If you're doing multiple business cards on one sheet, I highly suggest just designing one and then grouping everything so that you can just copy and paste it as needed. Uh, next, I'm gonna place in the outdoor vlogist text that you that I made. And, oh, that is not looking so good. I'm gonna check it out at high quality just to make sure everything is looking good. And actually, I like that. I like that, and so I'm gonna leave that as the front of my business card. And now I'll go to the back side, which is actually the first page in my document, which is a little bit strange. I don't, I guess I don't really know why I did that, but I just did it. That's just how it worked. <laughs> And I need to place the YouTube background, or the YouTube logo. So, let's see which one is gonna be the best one. What do I wanna use? I think I want to use this one with the gradient. And so size that frame. There we go. Got that all squared away. And then I will also bring in my Facebook logo. Holy cow, that's big. Let's scale that one down. And we'll scale that down. Uh, I'm going to use Command Zero. That fills my my frame with the thing. Actually, I'm going to zoom in a little further. And so I'm going to scale these down. Actually, quite small. They don't need to be super huge on the on the page because people are going to recognize them. I mean, it's Facebook. People are pretty familiar with that logo. And I'm going to. Line those up so that they are roughly the same size, and we'll call that good. So now, time to set some text fields. We'll just get the text tool right over there on the left in your toolbar, and we will go Facebook. Dot, whoops, Facebook.com slash outdoor vlogist which is my other YouTube channel. That's my vlog channel. So if you guys feel like going over there and subscribing, I would totally dig that. But if you don't want to, that's totally fine. Um, you'll obviously you want to pick a font that you like. I tend to like, whoops, Futura, if I can type it right. Uh, Futura Medium tends to be the best, although I accidentally picked Italic, I don't want italic. And so that will be my Facebook. I'm going to align the centers of those, move that up a little bit. And then copy and paste that so they have the same size of text. And www. August for both of my social media areas. And then I think I'm just going to put some 
random text here, something like, I was here today, or something like that, just, or, no. Something silly. An adventure happened here. Capital here. Log on to to find out more. Exclamation point. As simple as that, really easy. And yet it still has a direction, you know, they, it, asking them to log on. Obviously, it's a pretty good idea. Futura medium. I'm going to center that text. And then if you just, you can double click that to resize that box. And it will size it to the need, to the size that it needs to be. I'm just going to kind of center that in that column a little bit. Um, Actually, this might be where I want to turn back on those smart guides because like that, now it's aligned to the center of that column. Then what I'm going to do is simply group those, zoom out, and we will copy and paste. And see, having the the smart guides on right now is very helpful because as you can see, it's aligning it with the top of what's happening in the left column and the center of the right column. So I'll leave that there. And we will then group both of those together and copy and paste. And then align center and it will distribute evenly. Whoops, I accidentally moved my YouTube logo there. Don't want that. Now those all look about right in terms of centering, but what I'm gonna do is select all of them and then distribute the bottom edges. And that should make sure they are exactly evenly spaced so that all of my cards come out the same. Now I will go back to this page, group those items, copy and paste, and I gotta zoom in and make sure those get on my guides where I want them. Okay, and then copy and we'll paste those as well. And these will actually line up, will be much easier to line up because you just line up the top edge with the bottom edge of the others. And then just make sure that the left or the right edge, you can go from whichever edge you want, but just make sure that they stay inside the guides. And actually, the left edge of all of these is actually slightly off. So what I'm going to do before I finalize these, I'll just make sure that all of those are sitting down on the edge. And then I will grab all of those, just one side of them. You don't want to grab all of them. And align them. Let's zoom out and make sure I got all those. Whoops, zoomed too far. And we will align the left side there. And then distribute evenly between the centers. Distribute evenly between the centers. So now we have 10 business cards set up, 10 to a page with the crop marks and everything exactly where the printer would need them to be. And your business card is now ready to print. Obviously, you're going to use different information than I used. You're going to want to use whatever your website or your email, any contact information that you want your potential clients to see. You, you always want to just make sure that your business card properly reflects your business. It has to 
be memorable. It has to be something unique and something that will cause your potential customers to make contact. And for the third part of this video, I will go over how to prepare this file for printing. I hope you like this and we will see you in the next video. Thank you.